starting with a smile on our face. This is episode 56 of the Ingle Radio, the podcast, and this is presented by Source for Sports Surrey, the hockey shop, thehockeyshop.com, your one-stop shopping place for everything in the goalie world. It's a little piece of goalie heaven, as uh, Kevin Woodley likes to call it. Source for Sports Surrey, the hockey shop, thehockeyshop.com. I'm your host, uh, Darren Millard of Ingle Radio, the podcast. Today, we are going to chat with one of the uh, greatest goaltenders that we've seen in the modern era, Pekka Rene, who has uh, gone to a Stanley Cup final and has won a Vesna Trophy, and he is also one of the tallest goaltenders in NHL history. He's part of that goalie pipeline with the Nashville Predators and is on the backside of his career, but still learning, still refining, and has a uh, language to him. I'm not talking Finnish, but a, but a language to him where he drops terminology in his feature interview with Kevin Woodley that is uh, that is unique, informative, and borderline fascinating when you hear some of the things that he drops. Uh, we'll also chat with uh, Cam over at the Hockey Shop, Source for Sports Surrey, thehockeyshop.com. It's questions with Cam uh, discussing the CCM Premier uh, sale plus uh, the fitting and what happens if your youngster wants to wear the gear of his hero as we bring in uh, Woody and David Hutchison. How are you, boys? Good morning. Excellent. Woody, a big week for you uh, taking uh, in the uh, the Jersey retirement of the Sedins. So just, uh, I know it's not a goaltender, but uh, give me an idea of what it was like in the building this week. Well, the highlight absolutely was uh, Monday morning press conferences with both of the twins. And as they were winding down, it was kind of, I love the way the Canucks did it. Frankly, it was kind of an informal coffee with session. And they're just massive amount of media from Sweden as well. So we split Swedes with one one twin, uh, North American press with the other, and then swapped. And as it's all winding down, it was a good 40 minutes. Henrik just casually mentions to the remaining group of about seven or eight of us that are around him, mostly guys like myself and Ian McIntyre who have been there. My first training camp was the Sidian's first training camp in Stockholm, Sweden in 2000. Oh, really? So yeah, been around a long time with these two. And he just casually, like he throws it out there. He's like, hey, do you guys know that uh, this guy here stopped me on a breakaway the other day? Points no. at me. So yeah, no. I'm like, there we go. Highlight of, highlight of my career. I'm like, <laughs> and, and the best part was I said, yeah, I told him you were trying about 25%. He goes, oh no, I was trying to score. So there it is. That was the, yeah. And you know what? Yeah, awesome. um, joking aside, it sort of speaks to them, right? Like, uh, cause yeah. he probably, he probably knew how big a deal it was to me to get to play with and against them in that can tournament and like everything they did, they, they, they look, you know, uh, they're always thinking about other people and is amazing as I said. I had their whole careers. I got to cover them, and as incredible as they were as players, and there are so many moments. The one against Kiprasov, where it's like back to the point, throw it down, Henrik, one touch between the legs, no look pass to Daniel, cutting out of the corner to the net, takes it to the net, Kiprasov poke check, Daniel puts it between his legs, back over the short side pad. Like they had moments of magic between the two of them that I don't think we'll ever see again. But as incredible as they were as players, they were even better people. Um, most people, and, that, and that's true in this case. We we get a little oh. carried away with that line, but it is it is significant. The Canucks place uh, work that they've done is is yeah off the off the charts. Everybody knows about the million and a half donation they made in 2010 before they were making huge huge money. Million and a half donation between the two of them to help with a new wing. What most people don't know is they didn't even want that to be public. Like that's a fraction of what they do behind the scenes. They didn't want it to be public. They just wanted to do it because they wanted to do it. And the only reason they agreed to make it public is because the hospital let them know how much it would inspire other people right. to donate to the cause. And that's, there are so many stories like that. At the end of the day, um, it was an honor to cover their careers. It was, a, it was a pleasure to cover their careers, to get to know them as people. And they're different as people. They're, they may be twins, but they, like, outside of hockey, they don't always like all the same things. Um, but yeah, just fa- fascinating and a great week, a busy week, tiring week. But um, I love the way uh, they sent them off last night to the rafters. And Kevin BX was hilarious. And it was nice to see Ryan Kessler. Welcome back. These are names that if you're not in our market, you yeah. probably think of them as villains no, no, and Kessler, bad guys. Kessler, everybody knows Kessler. But um, and BX, huh? it was huge. And good to see Roberto Luongo last night as well. A lot of lose last night as he was there. A guy will have his jersey retired in Florida in March. Um, seeing him and getting to talk to him a little bit after the ceremony. Just, you know, hey, I've been covering this team for actually 20 years coming up at the, uh, at the end of this month. 
And the, the group that was on the ice last night for that ceremony was a massive part of it. So pretty cool to be around it. Uh, Hutch, um, do you think that uh, somebody was banging a trash can when uh, when Sadine was coming down on on Woody, and so Woody knew that he was going to uh, going to deke backhand, and so so I he think, knew which I, move to. No, I to think he, I think he probably had an earpiece in, and Bieksa was probably feeding him some tips. <laughs> no, hey, listen. If you haven't heard Bieksa's uh, chat last night, I think everybody needs to to it get online and listen to oh, it. It was great. It was so good. Now, hey, now the follow up is that uh, what was the move? What was the move that they that he did on you on the break? Well, away? this is the follow up is Ian McIntyre, who, who, like I said, is one of the guys who has been there, and and actually, like in terms of guys who have actually been there since their first year, guys who are actually in Sweden. I think it's like that Stockholm camp that are still around. It's me, Ian McIntyre of Sportsnet. And John Shorthouse. I think that's the extent of it. John term, Garrett. Um, I guess so. I don't remember yeah, him being in Sweden, but yeah, maybe that's just my old oh, man memory. Oh, maybe not in Sweden. You're right. Yeah. But um, anyway, so so of course Ian McIntyre pipes up and says, "Well, you you never scored on breakaways, anyways, Henrik." <laughs> <laughs> it's it's kind of true, but as I said, I'm like, hold 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 on hold on. Not entirely true. Point number 1,000 came on a partial breakaway, and he used the same move to score on Roberto Luongo. And Hendrick's like, yes, exactly. And we'll have to make sure we tell Lou that this week. <laughs> did, uh, did he get a chance to chat with Lou at all, or was he too busy? No, no, I had a chance to chat with him. They had a little informal media session after the ceremony itself, grabbed a couple quotes from the twins, a couple quotes from guys like Kessler and Lou for a story, and then How's just Lou? had an opportunity to talk with him. And He's, he, he looks really good. He looks like he's really settled into, uh, you know, he's enjoying uh, the role with the Panthers. Uh, he's, he's enjoying time with the family. He just, he looked really good. It was really good to see him. And uh, we'll get him on the podcast here in the summer. Um, didn't want to do it during the season, but we'll, we'll get him a, our, our inaugural guest riding in cars with Kevin. We'll have him back sometime soon. It's, uh, it was good to see him. Like I said, and, you know, if it wasn't for the Canucks and, and coverage that I have to do here in Vancouver, uh, I'd be damn tempted to fly to Florida for March 7th just to see the, his his jersey retired down mm-hmm. there. Uh, you know, just to, you brought up John Shorthouse, and he took over from Jim Houston, one of the greats in the game. And Shorty has been one of those people that, uh, in, in following uh, a really established person in any field, has been able to make it his own and uh, one of my favorite play-by-play guys. And when it comes to Henrik and Daniel and those clips, just where it's Henrik, Daniel, Daniel, Henrik, uh, created the, this, this, this cadence and this delivery. Uh, he's, I don't know, Hutch, uh, he's, he's one of my favorites, uh, Shorty. Wonder Twins well, activate. Every, yeah. yeah, well, I heard that one last night again. That was fantastic, wasn't it? I mean, like every great movie. Have you ever seen a movie that doesn't have... Uh, the soundtrack playing behind it, they just just to emphasize what what sound does for a movie. Yeah, and and I think if you think about that, that tells you how much that he's meant for our enjoyment of the Sedins and and hockey in general in this market. Right. Um, you have to have the soundtrack behind it to to punctuate everything. Uh, we've been so fortunate to to be here for this time. But and well, I say, hey, Canucks fans, talk about Canucks fans. Sorry, I yeah, have to interrupt exactly. you, but like, uh, Jim Robson. Right to to yep. to Jim Jim Robson to Jim Hewson to John Shorthouse. We've been pretty spoiled here in this market. We have uh, Shorty, old good old sports page uh, grad too, uh, from, <laughs> from the from the old days. Uh, for those of us that uh, that remember that, I can't believe I'm saying for those of us that remember it because it was uh, it was you talk about soundtracks of your childhood uh, sports page uh, coming up and then and then. I was going to say it's a night for the Sedins last night, but it was punctuated by goaltending at the end, wasn't it, Woody? Oh, Jacob Markstrom, boy, so he's the ground for the like, ages. I uh, I feel like uh, by the time the puck dropped on that last night, and that's how I'm a little tired this morning and inserting coffee, slurping coffee into everyone's ear here this morning. Uh, that puck dropped at like seven forty-five. It was almost eight o'clock. Um, I didn't get out of the rink till midnight. Like that's a full hour later than normal. But I hope enough people stayed up on the on the East Coast to watch that forty-nine save shutout performance, franchise record in terms of number of saves in a shutout. Swedish goaltending record broke the mark yeah. set by Henrik Lundqvist matched by Anders Nilsson 45 saves 49 save shutout and I'm telling you the Hawks had a number of quality chances Canucks were actually good defensively at clearing out not much else but clearing out loose change around them but man there were some five bell stops in there and 
Uh, I don't know what his raw numbers are right now. They probably they were nine fifteen going into last night, which isn't even top ten in the league. But I've t- said it before, guys. I have access to Valaket's adjusted numbers, and he saved more goals this season based on shot quality than anyone else in the NHL. I hope enough people stayed up to watch it because he should be in the Vesna Trophy conversation, and I sure don't see his name mentioned often enough. I looked well, at those uh, numbers on ClearSight this morning, and I don't know if they were updated from last night or not. No, but- they're monthly. Yeah, he doesn't lead by a little. He leads by a ton. Tim and Robin Lehner at the top and then everybody else. I, I was just looking at the goaltender plus minus contribution and the 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 four beneath them are just over 13, 14, 6, 14, 6, 14, 8, 17, 9 for Markstrom. So it's a, it's a massive lead. There was the breakaway by Pedersen and I thought well, as he's going down, I'm like, well, how fitting would this be? Uh, if he was able to to score, but then he, at the end of the night, it's Markstrom. I'm just thinking Swedish and the yeah, tie in sure. oh. and, and beautiful, and it's just it, it, it was a perfect bow. I, I don't know. It was like the the uh, the time of the clock uh, on their last goal. Like it just you you can't make this stuff up, and sometimes it just it just works out. But that Swedish uh, uh, contribution last night on the Sedin's retirement, their last home game, that game, obviously covering it. That was unreal. Daniel from Henrik at 233 of the of the overtime. That was unreal. And like you said, Darren, uh, good call on on uh I mean, it would have been great to have PD score, but um Jacob Markstrom, who was a big uh huge, like t- talks a lot about the role those tw- the twins had on his career. Um also talked about being nervous going into that game because he knew the audience and he knew how much the game would mean to them and how much they meant to him. Uh Henrik told me on Monday that they had 300 people flying in oh from God. from Sweden for that game. So hmm. the uh, the audience Yeah, the audience back home um, in Sweden, got 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 to see a show from a goaltender who, uh, like I said, record setting in terms of Swedish goalie shutouts, record setting in terms of Canucks franchise number of saves by a goalie and a shutout, and just, I mean, just this is this is what we've seen from him almost all year. And don't kid yourself with a game uh, of that magnitude, with that many uh, eyeballs on it, uh, to have a performance like that can sway the attention of the voters and the opinion of the voters significantly that's why uh, i was saying we, i hope they actually yeah. stayed up to uh, watch it even even if they don't and they just watch the highlights or they the the box score and it get, it goes a long way uh when you have a, a a strong performance in a high profile game or or a mediocre performance in a high profile game uh we've all seen that and and how it can influence people in uh in in their approaches so good on good on uh markstrom for that good on the vancouver canucks who don't go away and uh, and a great night for the Sedins. Uh, final thought uh, to you, Hutch, just on on that whole uh, approach by the and and one as as I give you this jumping off point, good on Vancouver to do that in a game against the Chicago Blackhawks, the uh, the villain during the, during the course of the uh, their their run, their request too, team request. Oh, really? It. Yeah, I was going to say I'd, I'd heard it was a request, and it was absolutely fitting. It, uh, it, it made it a fantastic night for everybody. Um, so, so glad they did that. I, I don't know. It, this isn't a finishing remark, but it, it just occurred to me as we were chatting there. I got the sense maybe there was a bet in the Canucks dressing room to see who could score the first uh, slap pass goal last night, Dawn of the Sedins. The number <laughs> of feeds to the back door yeah. from the point were incredible last night. Yeah, Shot what a fa- fantastic pass. evening. Uh, so well, let's get it to, uh, to a show. Pekka Rene is uh, going to uh, be our feature interview in, in a little bit. And we have uh, our gear segment is questions with Cam over at the Hockey Shop, Source for Sports Surrey, thehockeyshop.com. Uh, I was on the website this week and uh, ordering a couple of, uh, couple of sticks. So uh, that's, uh, that's going to be coming down my way soon. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. But it's a, it's a place whether you're in the lower mainland like you, Woody, or uh, or you're down in Vegas like I am. It's uh, they can take care of all your needs. And you're going to get an example of why they're where you should go, whether it's online or in person. In this segment with Cam, it's it's the expertise, right? We uh, we had a little fun with this one. Uh, I was jabbing them pretty good on some of it, but um, whether it's sale prices on the new on, on CCM premieres, they premiere prepare for CCM access to come in 
or just the questions with Cam answers, the, the knowledge that that he has, that his staff has. It's not just him. That's the thing, right? Um, Cam gets to be the star of the show, but if you end up talking to anyone else in that goalie department, they all play the position. They all have a passion for the position. They all have a passion for equipment. They're all goal, goalie gear geeks like us. And if you've got a question, they're going to have an answer. If they don't know it off the top of the head, they're going to check in with the manufacturer. That's uh, part of the reason I go in for my weekly trip is to make sure that I've got an edge on my competition by having a great edge and his staff always make sure in the skate shop that you have that. Uh, that was a sharp line. The gear segment, uh, questions with Cam, presented by Sorcerer Sports Surrey, the hockey shop, thehockeyshop.com. Welcome back to the Hockey Shop, Source for Sports out here in beautiful Surrey, British Columbia, the outskirts of Vancouver. You can find them online as well at thehockeyshop.com. We're here in person this week with Cam Matwiv. I am in goalie heaven, as I like to call it on a weekly basis. I'm looking to my right. I see like two giant racks of sticks, right-handed, left-handed, far walls. Just, oh, just look at all those new chest protectors. Two straight walls of pads. I turn around. I got blockers. I got gloves. I just got everything. All the accessories. Cam's yawning. I'm boring him with his description of where he is every day. But for the rest of us, this really is goalie heaven. Looking at all the skate wall. Some of it's on sale, Cam. I'm seeing some sticker prices here. It's that time of year. We're gearing up for the new material. And in the case of CCM, a lot of excitement around the new Axis line. We're excited. We've got a set coming. We'll share the design on that with our, with our audience here real soon. It's on its way. But the Axis line replaces Premier. And the Premier line, that means sale time. Can you tell us what is going to be on sale and what kind of discounts we're going to be looking at as you clear out last year's, or I guess two years ago, the CCM Premier line and, and all the senior lines below it and get ready for all this new Axis that is coming in in April? Yeah, so uh, CCM Premier 2, uh, leg pads, trapper, blocker, and subsidiary series P29 and P2.5. Um, all marked down. Um, CCM Premier Chest. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not be telling the people that the chest protector's on sale unless we... I've always said, you know me on this one. I've said I'm going to buy like multiples. Like this is like my... When they changed the wedges on, and they made it so you couldn't have like the cheating grooves on your wedges, I went out and bought like four sets. That Premier, that, that's... So you got enough that I can, you know... You can stock up, Kevin. We okay. got a couple for you. Because that thing is, that's, I've made no secret of it. That thing is mobile and massive. The and Premier I love LE it. as well. That's an all black edition. So that guy's on sale. All so sexy if you in prefer the all, all black, black sexy yeah, and all there's black. your chance. There's your chance. I mean, at least it'll make your body look good, right? Yeah. I mean, it takes a chest protector, giant puffy piece of equipment to make my body look good. Yeah. But that's, you know, kind of milk bag. But <laughs> um, so those are on sale. Pants uh, as well. I apologize for getting excited, but folks, you can get those on sale, the premier chest protector, because there will be a new access along that. I shouldn't get to, I shouldn't get carried away with the old one being on sale because the new one is an extension of the old one. I can't wait to share those details. Pants with the inner belt, another favorite of mine. Yes. So premier and premier LE, uh, both on sale as well as their subsidiary lines. Um, the one point R 1.9 and R 1.9 LE. Um, so you can find those all up on the website as well um, to check out all these prices because you're going to ask me how much the discount is. I, off I am. The top I, of my I head. was going to put you on the spot here and play a little like Jeopardy music while you figured it out and did math. What kind of discounts are we looking at here? You know what? The best discount that I can offer is go check it all online for yourself because the discounts are just that good. That's that's brutal. That is brutal. Not I thought even it was good. That's the prices. Well, I'm going to do some research myself and bring them to the folks after this segment. Um, but good discounts to be had on the premier line, um, both, as we said, the chest protector, the pads, the gloves, the lower price points, the senior and the youth lines all on sale while we wait for the access line. Well, I go and look up these discount prices for our audience, I think we should take this opportunity 
to we haven't done it we haven't done a questions for cam in a while as long as those questions aren't how much a p2 is and let's let's go that's going to be the fourth question we're going to start off with is this joanne so i'm i'm it sounds like a okay goalie parent what do you say when someone says their son needs the same gear as a certain NHL goaltender? So I'm wondering how many, like, we've seen this trend, right? Obviously, you know, say if you're in Montreal, Carey Price is your hero. Or frankly, if you're anywhere in Canada, Carey Price should be your hero. He's my hero. Um, you want to have his gear. You want to have that CCM E-Flex 4. But she didn't give me an age, so I don't have a specific age. But like, do you find that a lot where... Maybe the gear that they're that the pro goalie they like the most might not necessarily fit them in terms of them not being ready for senior. At least you have junior options, or maybe even from a style standpoint, maybe when they describe their play, that soft flexible pad might not that Carey Price wears in the E Flex line might not be what they need. Like, how do you answer that one? I would throw, if possibly going out on a limb, but probably put this in potentially the twelve and under. Um, you know what? There's there's a reason why we have multiple options and, and brands and whatnot, and there's a reason why that some brands look exactly like what you see in the NHL. Um, it's classic marketing, as you can clearly see. It's working based on that question. That said, you know, is that pad specifically right for my young goaltender? Um, what kind of questions would you ask to find that out? Uh, it's a lot about visual for me, actually. It's based on how they're trying on the pad and how they drop in the butterfly and whatnot. I'll have a lot of kids that will run in. They'll have something set up in their mind. You know, I have to look and play exactly like player X. Try on the same pad and then like, kind of give me that disgruntled look on their face as they say, I don't really like the pad. Now you know. Perfect. That's what we're here for. Um, gives you a chance to try on something else. Now, given Do you ever just respond by telling them, listen, kid, you're never going to be player X and make kids cry? Absolutely not. Okay. We're, we're, about making, I, we're about is, making dreams here, not not quashing them. This is why I wouldn't work well in retail. I'd just probably quash a few of those dreams. I mean, mine have been quashed years ago, so I'd go along those lines. Anyways, continue. You Salty answer, man you on the other side. You Salty are answering man on the other that side brilliantly, here. brilliantly. Continue with your but, answer. But that said, uh, you know what? It is a lot based on feel. Okay, say you're not here and don't have to be in store. You know, should I buy my kid? expat because um so and so wears it you know that's a tough thing to a little bit of the placebo effect will help like no matter what if your kid's hell bent on wearing um expat like no matter how bad it fits no matter how bad it feels he's probably still going to want to wear it in a lot of occasions if it gets to a point where it's negatively affecting his play because it's so wrong for him then we got to take a step back and make an evaluation is this really the right call it's always hard to say no to someone it's a little bit easier to convince them that they were wrong by showing so you just cr- crush some dreams, sort of, but with logic. Yes, a science. little, a little less science. Blunt than I may have been. I like the word science. Okay, it feels good. Right, science now. works for me. Good answer. And this is why you come to the hockey shop source for sports when you can in person to get fit. We've talked about it over the over the last couple of months with these segments with Cam. Um, you don't just walk in and say, I want this, I want this size. These guys will get you set up in gear that's going to perform for you. So great answer to that question. Next question in the questions for Cam segment is curves on sticks, different patterns, different options, custom options. What, how many are there on average per brand? How do you sort of size and fit and lie and angle like how much of that is personal preference and how much is that again getting a kid in the gear getting the setup in a stance how tough is it to fit sticks uh it can be tough it can be extremely easy um there's a lot of to be honest that's not an easy question to answer because there are so many options oh so this is uh this is darren uh and he's a goalie not a goalie parent so darren wicked question because we're making cam think uh, it's not even necessarily a, a make it think is it more so is, is that there's no easy broad stroke for this one. Um, with like at the basis, most companies have at least two curves going up to four. Uh, some have hidden curves that you don't really know about unless you're ordering custom and things like that. Okay. Which curve is right for me? A lot of it's based on your play style. What your desired goal is every time you venture out to go play the puck. Am I making a 10 foot pass, which most goalie coaches recommend? That's all you're supposed to do. 
Or am I trying to go for that long bomb? That's me. Yeah. I need to chuck that sauce all the way to the center ice line. Usually just to the other team stick, but hey, I got to try. Well, there there you go. And then you might need something with a little bit more of an open toe and a wedge shape to have that more loft slash rainbow effect. Or are you looking for Ooh, more like of Alex Daylock told us he needs an empty net goal stick. Exactly. There you go. There's there's the thing. And it's come up a couple of times actually recently, especially with Pekka uh, scoring one as of as of late. Talked to him about that just the other first week on the podcast. Stick too. He talked about that. But but that said, curves aside, your stick should be functional in that sense. And a lot of the curves can affect on how the puck rebounds off the stick, how you deflect it up into, you know, say the boards or over top of the boards and whatnot. As opposed so, to into your net. Ideally, yes, which I did to myself last night. Okay, so between brands, say I am a... And I actually had this question on Instagram uh, recently, so we're going to kill two birds with one stone here. If I'm a Carey Price curve in a CCM, does Bauer or Warrior have an equivalent or do each of them sort of have their own different ones in terms of like, I know some of them are just numbers, um, number patterns, some of them have names on them. Like, are there commonalities between the brand where if I have a particular lion curve I like with one, I can find it in another brand? How, how easy or how common is that? You sure can. Um, in in most cases, it's quite simple. Um, to be honest, the uh, aforementioned Bauer is a little bit more difficult because you see P thirty one, and that's usually about that's the it. standard. Yeah. Yes. That said, um, even with their Vapor two X, for example, and ordering custom, you do have a couple more options, and you can find a curve that would actually match up to that Carry Price curve. Can you tell me off the top? You, I'm going to put you on the spot. Which one is it? Uh, mm-hmm. It's either P. 34 or 39. I can't remember exactly which one it is off the top of my head. Okay. I'm sending this guy to you to clear that up. Like you, like I was going to play the Jeopardy music. You answered it so quick. You didn't have, give me a chance to cue it up, but like, I'm pretty sure in Jeopardy, they don't say like, I'm, that's not like not to play Alex Trebek here, but it's either this or that is an acceptable answer. You have to the end of this podcast to get me the correct one, Cam. I mean, we, we, we call it questions for Cam because we want answers from Cam, not vague generalities. You didn't, you didn't even ask me which one it is in Warrior. What, okay, so which one is it Mrazic. in Warrior? There you go. Eat it. Mrazic. Mrazic and Carey Price, same curve. I dropped the mic, but I don't want to break it. Don't break my mic. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay, so um, that's why you come to the hockey shop. Check them out. Where can they get a hold of you, Cam? If they have questions like this, they want to ask in person instead of asking me on Instagram. 604-589. Eight two nine nine, And of course, you can check them out online at thehockeyshop.com. Submit questions that way through email. Um, there are times when Cam's busy, usually entertaining me as I ask silly questions, poke my way around the store, pull things off the rack, leave them lying on the floor, test all the gloves to see how they close. Like I'm that annoying customer. And if Cam's busy cleaning up after me, there are other people here in the store that can help you with those answers or online. And that's the beauty of the Hockey Shop Source for Sports. All of them play goal. All of them have a passion for the position and all of them will be able to help you. It's called questions for Cam, but the reality is most of the people in this store can answer them. No disrespect meant, Cam. Um, Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for giving us the heads up on the premier sales. Thanks for answering some questions from Cam. You've got 30 seconds to go find me the correct answer to that CCM. I love Cam. I I didn't didn't think that I'd, I'd really... Uh, bond with somebody uh, that that does these uh, these gear segments every week, like like I have. I really look forward to what what Cam has to offer. And just your your point, uh, and it really shines through during the uh, the gear segments every week. What he is, if you're a goaltender, and and we've all been in whether you're shopping for a car or clothes or or sports equipment, and you're there and you're kind of intimidated by by salespeople coming up, and you you, you want information, but you're you're not really uh, confident in, in in your questions, or you're a little self conscious. That's not the case at uh, at Source for Sports Surrey. Like there, the sales uh, team there, the service team is as excited to talk about goaltending as as you are. So don't don't feel that way. It's it's a really cool, neat conversational model that they have going. So that's my uh, that's my commentary on on uh, what they are doing over at the hockey shop. Well, and we, we did sort of not really give, I, I was giving Cam a hard time about maybe not having some of the numbers off the top of his head. So uh, he was able to pull a few of them. So for the, those of you listening and going, come on, tell me exactly how much can I save on the CCM Premier 2 line? And you don't feel like going online because it really is easy. Just go to thehockeyshop.com. You can find it for yourself. But for example, CCM Premier 2, like the pro level 
leg pads, regular 2000 bucks on sale for $1,679. Um, the 2.9 senior, so that's sort of the uh, next line down in terms of um, you know, not quite the pro level pad, the next model down regularly a thousand bucks on sale for 800. Uh, I saw the chest and arm protector, uh, depending on the model, the LE was on sale, but also like this, this, the stock premier chest protector uh, from the 2017 model, which really not much has changed on it as low as 329. Seriously, that's like me and my Cleveland wow. wedges with the old cheater grooves. Oh, I'm gonna go, he's yeah. lining up. Uh, yeah, Woody's I'm going to go wallet. stock up on that right now. That's one of my favorites. Oh, I'm doing the math right now on the exchange, what I can get. Oh, no, I can't. Can I? Can well, I get you, that? Yeah. I, you, no, not to see you. go shopping but you, when you come to visit us. Yeah. But oh, it, yes, yes. Also, yes. all you have to you, don't forget, you have friends that live near the border, myself. So right. as long as the people that work at the border aren't listening, we can probably work yeah. something out there, Darren. Yeah, there's... They're they're all good. They they understand what. Uh, or I just uh, need, I mean it's just in my luggage when I come to visit you on a weekly basis. Oh oh, is Hutch, Hutch, is, can Hutch <laughs> and I go down there? Oh come on guys, leaving me out again. Hey, I was just gonna say you know Cam might not have had all those numbers at his fingertips, but I'm sure I've been told that Einstein didn't remember his own phone number either. You know if you can look it up, you just got to keep your genius working on your genius stuff, and he's. He's incredible. We're don't forget that this is a guy that gets to fly to Montreal to meet with CCM, fly to Florida to meet with Bauer. Uh, he's connected to all the insiders. It's not like going to just any old hockey shop down the street. This guy knows his his stuff, which is why I was so geeked this week because our Bauer ultrasonic oh, you guys are oh, you ultrasonic guys are supreme. You've seen the teases on Instagram, yes. folks. Yes, it arrived on Monday. Not you uh, guys. He was teasing me too. I'm a fairy right away from those pads. Yeah, we send it to the main office. That would be oh, my house. Oh, not the main um, office, the satellite so, office. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, Cam was like uh, on the visit. I, I, I'd, he, I'd, see, I'd shown him a picture, and he says, "I'm like, hey, just on any chance? I know he's seen it. Obviously, they've, they've yeah. ordered it. He's had it on his legs, but." He's like, you maybe want to bring that in? Let me have a look. I'm like, yeah, I'll bring it with me when I come to the store. So it's nice for me to bring, be able to bring yeah. in a little goalie eye candy for Cam every once in a while. Uh, membership here at Ingold does have its benefits. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm not going to lie to you. I have uh, serious uh, gear envy of the both of you. And, uh, and you know what? That's one of the coolest things about, uh, about being a goaltender is you never stop loving gear and, uh, and the new technology, whether you're seven years old or you're, uh, in the upper echelons like that, uh, and Hutch uh, 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 working his way through uh, through his various lines of gear. Uh, Pekka Rene, uh, I mentioned that I ordered my sticks. Uh, a part of that is the the convincing and the urging of uh, Woody and Hutch uh, to try some new technology. I did that. I cannot go back, so I've got some new twigs coming. And uh, and Pekka Rene is a guy that uh, managed to score a goal. So uh, we will chat about that and a whole lot more. And listen to the lingo. And some of the terminology that uh, Pekka drops so with his conversation with uh, with Kevin Woodley, I'm going to throw out some some uh, examples, uh, eye exercises, uh, props. He talks about that, and there's uh, this new term that I've never heard before: fake resistant. It's uh, part of the discussion with Woody and Pekka on In Goal Radio, the podcast, our feature interview presented by Source for Sports Surrey, the Hockey Shop, thehockeyshop.com. Enjoy. I want to go back to where it started for you. Like, where did the passion for goaltending? Do you remember the first time you were in net? Like, how did this all start for Pekka in it? It was because of my cousin. Um, my cousin, Yari, is seven years older than me. And uh, he was a goalie back in uh, Kempele, Finland, which is uh, close to my hometown, Oulu. Um, that's where I was born. And... Um, yeah, he was a goalie. I always looked up to him and I, I thought that was like the coolest thing, you know, all the gear and, you know, the mask. And even though he didn't, he didn't wear a mask, he had the old uh, bucket and, and cage, old school uh, system. But uh, yeah, so it started as a, you know, being a street hockey goalie. And I, I would always, so obviously they were older than me and they were taking shots on me and, and I just fell in, fell in love with the position and um, I didn't, start playing hockey in a team until I was uh, seven years old. So my cousin took me to the first practice. It was um, on the outdoor outdoor rink and uh, I was a I was a player 
you know, I, was, I skated out uh, first practice and we didn't have a regular goalie. So I, I asked right away, I'm like, you know, listen, I, uh, I want to be a goalie. And, and uh, since that day, uh, I've been a goalie. Seven, eight. At what point in that evolution from young kid just loving the position to thinking maybe there was a future in it? Like, it, like at what point did it get serious for you? When did it go from fun to, I guess maybe it's still fun, but when, when did it sort of cross that line to something you thought you could do for a long time? Uh, for me, it was uh, later on. It was, um, I, I was never like a high, high prospect or anything like that. And I never played single one national team game for juniors or junior team or anything like that. So, um, uh, it was it was probably when I was 17, something like that, 17, 18. Uh, started playing with my my hometown junior team. That it's a that's a really good team, and um, it's Carpat, right? Yeah, exactly, Carpat. And uh, so started over there and played through the uh, the junior system last last three years, I think, the last two years. Uh, and uh, I, I think that's it was a it was a big big time wake up call for me. I um, I wasn't you know, up to fitness to play in that level. I wasn't, you know, like the summer training, it was a shock to me. I was absolute, um, the first summer with them, I, you know, because before that I, I played different sports. I, I played, um, you know, Finnish baseball and, and all this stuff, um, during the summers. And I, I, w I would just play hockey in the, in the, you know, during the season and, and, and then other sports during the summer. You know, I, I obviously I, I still think that I, I was lucky because I got to do that. I, it, it was uh, beneficial for me. But I was just gonna ask because we hear a lot about maybe goalies now from eight years old. That's all they do. Yeah. Do you see the benefit pay off? We've obviously talked about Pesapola in the past and the glove hand. Do you, you think that physical literacy of playing all those other sports benefited you as a pro? Well, I I, I think so. I you know I I've been physically and and hockey wise too. I've, I've always been a late bloomer. So. I, I think it was beneficial for me. Maybe, maybe not not to everybody, but I, I thought that I was lucky that I got to do that. Um, I got to kind of come up through the ranks at my own speed. You know, I, nobody was really pushing me, or it wasn't until I I figured everything out. You know, what I wanted to do and what I was willing to put into it yeah, and true. willing to sacrifice. And and um, you know, it was a, it was a big like I, like I said, it was a big time wake up call for me. Um, and then I started putting in the work. I got really passionate. Hockey was always my passion, but I, I really started enjoying the process and enjoying, uh, you know, kind of challenging, challenging my, myself. And it was, uh, it was obviously a good challenge for me because, you know, I would, I would compare myself to, to the other, te other guys um, on my team and other goalies and things like that. And I knew that I, you know, there's ways to go. And, but that's, that's when it really, you know, started getting more serious. It was still fun, but, you know, more serious to me, I think. You had Nicholas Backstrom as a playing partner in Carpat 0405. What role did he play in that that sort of that stage of your development as an influence? Well, I, you know, he was uh, he was coming to his prime priming in his career and uh, at the time, and just a great guy, great partner. Um, you know, I, I think I learned a lot from him. Um, he he always had like the hardest work ethic, and I would always uh, try to match that and and. Uh, at you know, at the time he was, I, in my opinion, he was one of the better goalies outside of NHL. So I, I think he was a great mentor for myself, and so yeah, for sure he had a he had an impact. And then um, our goalie coach uh, Ari Hilly, I still to this day work with him, you know, over the summer. So he he's had a, obviously a big time impact in my career. And you come over here, you're drafted, you come over Nashville in the organization in Milwaukee at the beginning. I mean, we all know Mitch was a part of the development yeah. at the beginning. What was that? Your, what do you look back on that experience and working with him? What are your memories? First, first, first experience with him. It, it can be a little sh shocking, I think, maybe for some guys the first time. He's, he's blunt. Oh, yeah. He's, uh, he's straight up. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was. I mean, I thought that I was, you know, I was so, I was. When I came over, I, I wasn't I wasn't extremely young. I was I was just turning uh, twenty three that season, and uh, but I was very naive. I you know first time outside of Finland really, and and uh, you know everything was new, and I was super excited about everything. And and but yeah, Mitz was Mitz was awesome. Uh, but he yeah he he tells you if he if he sees something, and he lets you know if if he thinks that it, you know. There's 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 area that you get to work on or but I, I loved it 
because you know obviously he he saw something in me in me and I felt that right away and you know so then it's easier to take that that you, you take it the right way and uh, but he he was always so good to me and I mean he's a, he's a legend in 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 his in his business in in his line of work so um, you know all the goalies he's he's had and he's been able to work with guys you know with different different style of play too you know hockey has changed over the years in his career um massive amount so it was it was great he he had a, he had a big game back do you remember what changed and maybe more importantly what didn't because there's probably times as a big goalie young in your career where other people would have said oh he needs to do this or needs to do that and i know mitch wanted to encourage that the athleticism never left your game is, is that as important as what changed what he didn't try and force to change yeah he never i i can't think of anything he really tried to change um you know i was very raw at the time i i always played very athletic style of um hockey and i would challenge guys i would come out far and um uh, i would use my use my hands a lot and you know things like that and uh, i think i think he started the process of trying to slow my game down a little bit, um, trying to become more patient, trying to, you know, trust my, trust my size a little bit better and things like that. And, um, but he, he never, he never took anything away from my game. I, you know, obviously he added a lot of things, but he never, he never really tried to change me. How's it, how's it continue with Benny? How's that relationship? How's that process? Cause you still always look for things. You've never rested on your laurels. I think it's one of the things I've always admired about you. Oh, he's he's awesome. I I think uh, you know obviously Benny is only I, I think he's only a year older than me, so we are very very much the same same age level. And um, but he's been awesome. He's so he's so passionate about being a goalie, uh, be you know being a goalie business, and um, just finds a way to you know get you know new things and uh, everything like that. So so he's he's been he's been awesome for me and Juice. So we've talked over the years about uh, that sort of constant evolution. And Benny's been a big part of that since since Mitch left. What are some of the things that you still focus on, you still work? You talked about Mitch earlier on, you know, trying to maybe quiet things a bit. Is that sort of part of the constant focus? And how has that shifted maybe in the past couple of years? Yeah, it is for sure. But, you know, at the same time, I feel like we last time we talked about, you know, how the game has changed a lot and um, kind of, puts puts goalies to a in a in a different spot in a sense that you know i i think you know obviously, obviously like you know things like visual training uh we've been focusing way more than in the past you know just kind of reading and reacting play you know just trying to um mimic game situations in practices which is which is hard to do but i feel like nowadays it's you know, just, you know, being fake resistant and things like that. I, I think it's so important. Guys have so much skill nowadays. And um, a lot of the, you know, zone one goals, if, if it's not a tip or a rebound, a lot of times it involves some kind of puck movement. And, you know, you can't just drop and block. A lot of times, I, you know, I feel like, you know, those are the, some of the things that we've been focusing in lately. And, uh, you know, but, you know, I, I still think I, I, I'm a strong believer of, uh, you know, visual training and, um, you know, and mental training too. And, but that's obviously a very individual thing. You know, a lot of guys find benefit from, you know, a lot of different, different areas. Can you give me an example of what visual training is for you? And I, I got it. You've, you've, you've got my ears perked up with that phrase being fake resistant at a time when shooters have more deception than ever. So how do those two maybe go hand in hand? And what do you do on a visual training side, Pekka? Uh, we have a lot of props. Benny has been very, uh, you know, helpful with that. He's, uh, he's provided a lot of, uh, you know, we've been working with this doctor from, uh, from actually Minnesota. Uh, started, I think, first time actually with Mitch way back and, uh, and uh, kind of continued that relationship. And um, so Benny hopped in and, and uh, you know, he's... I, I, you know, we have, for example, we have, you know, different ping pong balls and, you know, th stuff like that with like numbers or letters and you, you pick them up and, um, trampolines and, you know, um, but, uh, you know, one thing that I feel like I've benefited is from, uh, you know, these classes that you flip, these like flippers, um, and you, you use them. I don't know actual like actual terms what it like is. A, like a strobe glass? No, different. no, different. It's like you know, like a if you have a 
if you have bad eyes, you have like really strong classes, like, you know what I mean? Like, and they, they have like, so you can, you can get them different strengths. I don't know if I can, I don't know so how to. It's taking you in and out of focus. Yeah. So it, it, it makes your, makes your eyes work really hard, you know, to kind of, um, you know, so you, you can be reading something and it, it really takes an effort to, you know, make out what it what it what it says or so you're you're training the eyes you're yeah, training the muscles yeah, of the eyes is that so, fair description exactly that's not like reaction time or nothing like that it's just like training the eye muscle and uh um you know the point being it's just um it's easier to for a long period of time periods of time you can focus on one one thing for a long time and um so your eyes don't get as tired as easily, but, uh, you know, those, are, that's what, just one of the things. It sounds like it almost goes, you said, you said mental training, but that sounds almost like hand in hand, the ability to focus and concentrate. Are they related? Do you have other mental drills you like to do? Uh, you know, I, not though giving away state secrets. Yeah, no, I, I think, I think a lot of the, a lot of my, for me personally, what works is, uh, um, you know, the, the routines I have, um, you know, I, I feel like most of the guys are kind of similar, uh, you know, you stick to your routines and that's your mental preparation. But, um, for, but for me, it starts night before. And a lot of times I do that visual training, um, kind of puts me in the, in the sleep mode too. You know, it's, it's tired, it's tiring for your eyes and stuff. So, um, but yeah, I, I, and then, you know, I have, I have a few like mantras that I keep, uh, keep repeating during the game. Um, just can, can you know, share one or. Uh, it's, you know, I, I talk to myself in Finnish, but, um, you know, just kind of like power words that, you know, I've created for myself, you know, the things that I, you know, just try to just, you know, keep things quiet and, uh, you know, calm myself down and I, but I, I keep kind of repeating the same words over and over again. Is one of them empty net goal? Sorry? Is one of them empty net goal? Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. I know how much that would have meant to you because I know how much you've worked at that side of your game and used puck handling to stay busy. And remember, we talked about you know yeah. games where you weren't busy, how you stayed involved. Is that a com culmination of a lot of years of work to get that opportunity and sink it? Uh, I think so. I um, yeah, I, I think I had to be lucky to to get that chance, and uh, I've tried it a few times. And um, but yeah, it was it was pretty special feeling when when I saw that go in and um does it go in with a wood stick uh yeah i mean i actually yeah i, I love i used to love my because you're the first one to do it with a composite yeah <laughs> oh yeah I, I read it yeah it's it's true um but yeah I, I feel like both sticks i mean yeah yeah you get a shot the same similar kind of shot but uh but yeah for sure the new technology is unbelievable um you know the the, the weight and the you know you can you can have different stiffnesses and you know your preference what do you what do you want on your stick and and so it's pretty pretty awesome that as goalies we can we can we can have that too nowadays when you talked about the evolution of the game and how much harder it is for goaltenders now and and in the past couple of years is it is it primarily the increase in lateral plays yeah i think it all links into like you know the things we talked about you know one being like fake resistant and um but you know you can tell these young guys when they come to the league you know choose being one and you know david david riddick and um you know gear gif and you know i feel like i feel like they're bringing uh vasilevsky obviously um you know he's been around already but i feel like these guys they they bring a new element to a goal goaltending uh you know the, not only you have to be super athletic but you you got to be very high high hockey iq and you can tell these guys you know um you know it's just the the way it links together you know you the way you have to as a goalie breed plays nowadays um you know stay fake resistant but still be able to commit to shots and things like that so it's i feel like it's a lot um so in that sense it's really also important to be able to simplify things in your head and just let you you know not overthink things and just kind of let your let your body trust your instincts and things things like that and um but yeah i really like like the new 
new school guys that are young the young young guys that are coming in what do you like you talked about this in the past what have you learned from uc like as one of those guys you mentioned like are there things in your game now that weren't there before he arrived that you've learned from him? Can you give us an example? Um, there probably is. I, I feel like, you know, maybe Benny could answer that better. It's hard to, like, evaluate yourself. But, uh, but yeah, for Jews, obviously, you know, with his size, it, it, you know, he has to play the game in a certain way. And uh, he's extremely, extremely good, good at reading, reading shots, you know, reading if it's coming high or low. And, you know, and, you know for a bigger guy, it's... It's, you know, a lot of times you just first you go down and, and you know, on, on the way down, you kind of react to the puck and, you know, he has to be so precise um, and things like that. And um, he's so strong on his, on his skates, uh, you know, on his feet, um, you know, obviously, obviously he's, he's good down low, but I, the one thing that I, I, I've tried to take away from him is, uh, you know, the way he uses his edges and, um, you know, just keep keeps himself out of the trouble um you know even though plays athletic game but still plays a quiet simple game um and just trusts trust is his he's gonna read and uh you know really you know he's just consistent goalie rarely gets beat you know soft goals and things like that and um you know he's mentally really strong for a young guy uh gonna even kill guy um you know i I personally, I can get a little up and down once in a while, and uh, but you know those are things that you know I, I I always try to try to learn, and you know I, I think when you when you come older, I I feel like it's even more important, you know, uh, this kind of not only to stay in the league, but you know to be be able to like challenge yourself and keep um, you know you always obviously you you try to stay in the top and you try to. You know, you try to do all the all the right things. Patience is that like yeah. the simplest way of looking at that new like the ability like fake resist and all those terms like the ability to hold edges and stay patient, and not commit. Is that it's the easiest thing to say, but how, yeah. how hard to do? Yeah, exactly. I, I think it is. I think you know. I, I feel like there's a there's a saying in 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 the U.S. that you know when you look at the like a you know dock dock that that's swimming on the you know on the surf it's just, it looks so you know motionless and effortless and graceful but underneath there's a lot of lot of stuff happening and i feel like that's that's how it is with with goalies too you know you you know you look at you know a guy like vasilevsky is he seems seems that he keeps things simple but you know there's a lot lot going on and um, you know, when he needs to, his athletic ability takes over and, and, um, but it is, it is nowadays more than ever before. It's really important that you have a strong structure and foundation. And, uh, you know, on top of that, you, you, you know, then, then comes the, you know, athletic, athletic ability and, um, the individual skill. Playing a lot of games, something you've done a lot during your career. We see a lot of this focus now between, you know, more of a shift balance. On a game day, when you're not playing, does anything change physically? You still have to do the same physical warm-ups. Like, where, where is the rest between playing a lot and not playing a lot? Is it mental or is it physical? Oh, it's mental. It's mental. I feel like, I feel like when you... I think it's a misconception that people think it's with the rest is the physical part? Yeah, I, I, feel, I, I totally, I 100%. Because I feel like, you know, you know obviously, obviously the last couple of years, um, you know, we've been kind of splitting more games and um it's becoming more even you know every year and um and when you're not playing you actually you know you on the ice way more and you know which is a good thing but it's not necessarily physical rest it's a, it's a mental break and a chance to regroup and chance to work on things and um yeah i always find that when you you know when you play plus 60 you know 70 games uh it, it's such a mental challenge uh just balancing the ups and downs of the season and and you know it's a grind it's a it's a it's a long season and and even when things are good it's still it still weighs on you and and that's the biggest thing is you know being able to stay fresh mentally and um so obviously it's easier when you know when you kind of these days it feels like and one thing too, like, you know, you mentioned a lot of teams are doing, you know, the kind of one A, one B situation. And but the fact, 
I feel like the fact is just, you know, there's more, there's just so many good goalies. And when in, you know, maybe, maybe way in the back, it's, it was, you know, you paid your number one goalie and, you know, he was just that good. And, and, and now there's almost every team has just a, you know, two number one goalies pretty much. And, and, or like a, you know, a young guy as a, as a back, you know, one B and, and who, who's, who's becoming a number one goalie. So it's a, I, I feel like it's a, it's a shift of, I don't know, I don't know what it is, but generation or uh, just the evolution of game. And um, I feel like that's how it's going to, how it's going to be. I, I feel like there's going to be more and more young guys coming in and, and with, with unbelievable talent and skill. Thanks, Paga. Thanks, buddy. There, there was a whole lot there, uh, and I kept writing it down, and I was texting you guys when I was listening to the interview, going, uh, fake resistant, eye exercises, eye training. Pro like, it was just a really cool uh, discussion where he was dropping all this knowledge uh, in, in just a casual conversation, Woody. Yeah, and, uh, and, and I mean, at the end of the day, fake resistant basically, you know, is just basically means patience, but it's a great term. It's, it's a it's fantastic term. It's a, yeah, it's a great term. And the props, I mean, obviously props go way back with the National Predators organization and Mitch Korn. I mean, we've seen the, you know, the bag over the head for screens, the white pucks, the uh, screen boards and deflection boards, all the different things. Obviously, the medicine ball. Uh, we've seen all those things over the year. But then I saw a new one, like the next day, Nashville was back at home. Uh, and had a practice, and I saw a picture of UC Saros, and they had one of those from uh, Ice Hockey Systems, the sort of tripod foam um, screen slash deflector legs that they put out for both yeah. defensemen and goalies, sort of to, for tips and drills and traffic. And it's they, to save people from getting hurt. Yeah, it's better than <laughs> you know make, making your yeah. fourth liner stand out there and 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 use his shins as the screen board. Um, and it's actually a local company here in Vancouver, as I said, Ice Hockey Systems that, and, and a skills coach that developed those and sells them to the NHL. But they'd added a, uh, a green puck bucket on top to make sure it was nice and tall and ahead. And they, <laughs> they put a couple like uh, bars out the side, like for arms, and they, they had hung Gatorade towels off them. So um, just to add to the screen, I mean, and this thing was gigantic, like poor UC Saros, not the biggest goalie in the world, was like hidden behind it as he's trying to make saves and i'm like like just a day after hearing pekka talk about props or two days later to see that online on on the old internets and twitter i was like this is perfect so um the lengths they go to to become better as goaltenders and you know shout out to ben vanderklok uh, you heard a lot of talk about him on the podcast uh, or in that interview with pekka uh, who's done a really nice job not easy to come come in on the come in behind a legend and a future Hall of Famer in Mitch Korn. But Benny's done a really nice job, both with, mm -hmm. with Pekka and with UC Saros. And tough year this year. They haven't been a great team defensively. The environment has gotten a little more predictable since John Hines took over, but I think their numbers took a beating early in the year. And, you know, we didn't talk about it with Pekka, but this has got to be a tough transition for him as well. Playing a little less, uh, UC taking, getting, getting more of the starts and playing well, deservedly so. But for a goaltender that's played as much as Pekka has, for a goaltender... That We're is, seeing in a couple of places, right? Uh, Henrik. Uh, same thing with Lundqvist. The, I mean, these guys aren't used to, we talk about like, what's the hardest position in sports as a goaltender because you don't control your environment and you're the like the absolute last line of defense and you're in the spotlight. Well, to me, the hardest subset of goaltending is backup goaltender because when you don't play much, you got to dwell on your mistakes. If you make too many, well, I, when am I going to get to play again? Like there's just, you have no rhythm, you have no timing, you're the practice. Like there's just so much added layers of complexity and difficulty as the backup. And for a guy like Pekka, who A, has never been in that role or hasn't been for a long time, but B, he's a goalie who style-wise, we've talked about him needing to feel active and rhythm and timing are all a part of his game. And the puck handling and the goal, like that was all a function of him handling every puck he could so that he could feel a part of the game when they right. became a low event team. And now all of a sudden, he's watching... Four out of five from the bench, or three out of four from the bench. Like that's that's between the years. That's a tough adjustment, and it's been a bit of a tough year. I still, when I watch him play, I still see a skill set there that that that's at that upper echelon. It's just a matter of being able to plug into it when you're not playing, and that's that's not an easy thing to do. Hutch, are you still there? Yeah, I am somewhere. I just got to rewind five or six minutes to the beginning of that answer, and I can uh, just. <laughs> Just wanted to give a couple of things. I got to take notes on all the things I can comment on as we weave our way through one of these complex Woody answers. Um, first off on Ben Vanderklok, uh, 
a, another shout out to him. We were on the ice at one of his camps in um, St. Catharines, Ontario, a couple summers ago, and got to see all the various props in action. Uh, fantastic camp if you live in that area. And, um, and Ben is just a really genuine, warm human being. And I think that's what makes it easy for him to follow on the, on the tail of, uh, of Mitch Korn, because he is genuine. There's no pretentiousness there. There's no trying to be something he isn't. Uh, just a, a genuine, knowledgeable coach. Uh, still owes us an article, Ben, if you're listening. Um, I think it was a lecture on the 10 or 12 qualities of a great NHL goaltender. And I hope we'll have that one day here at Ingle for you. Um, so, so that was the first thing that popped to mind there. And now I, I think I've probably even forgotten where we ended that one. This is my whole plot. It, it is your whole plot. I was going to talk actually the backup goaltender. Um, you know, often you, you, the things you mentioned quite correct, Woody, about being in your own head and how difficult that is. But we also forget uh, how it must feel to be that backup and thinking about what the team is thinking of you. Um, cause you don't want to let your team down and then you finally get in there. And, and I think it's something that young goaltenders face quite a bit. If they don't play quite as much, they're worried about what their buddies in the room are thinking, what the other now, parents are thinking. That was my thinking, biggest fall, you know? uh, fall, failing point when I played. Yeah, was, it's tough. Was, it's was, tough. It's not just that. yourself. So maybe, you know, we, we had this nice column over an in goal premium, ask the in goal goalie dad, who is not me. Um, I think maybe we'll see if we can get him a question about a great idea. that role as a youngster. Uh, so Pekka did score, and I wanted to give a shout out to uh, Taryn Cozen of the University of Saskatchewan Huskies, who scored a goal a couple of weeks ago, having a great season in uh, in CIS, and it just uh, he he got it, uh, the goal in a shutout performance, and uh, there was a great uh, stat on uh, the write up of that uh, game against the Calgary uh, Dinos was um, uh, other goals were provided by. Blah 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 and blah blah blah, <laughs> but uh, but but it was uh, it was uh, it was a great accomplishment for Taryn Cozen, Camels Blazer, and Seattle Thunderbird grad from Nippon, Saskatchewan. So uh, following in the uh, footsteps, following in the footsteps of uh, of Pecorani and being able to score, and it was a rocket down the ice by by Taryn. It wasn't one of these high floaters that that bounced a couple of times. It was catch it, drop it, shoot it, and right in there so so here's the trivia well, it's not a trivia question the question of the day uh he's got the shutout there yeah. if, you, if you're preserving a shutout and you you get a goal uh would you rather keep the shutout or do you want to let one more in so you can say you got the game winning goal uh well the shutout, yeah but, but yeah, wouldn't it, was, it be fun it was he was up two, so it wouldn't have been that case but well no right. not in that case i just mean in general yeah. No, no, I um, I think a GWG would be it would be better. Has than anyone a, ever than had a, one? Shut out. Yeah, Has anyone ever be historic. One? Yeah, yeah. Has a goalie ever had a game winning goal? I don't I think, think so. You got me on the internet. Yeah. yeah, we'll have to look that up for 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 next week. Let um, us know in the comments. Is, um, do you think guys practice that shooting at uh, empty nets like legitimately without screwing around, but legitimately practice well, shooting at the uh, empty net? Yeah, for sure. You're just feeding me here. I know that uh, I know that Woody's told us before that Mike Smith likes to practice lobbing them end to end. And, don't uh, don't start this. I'm not going to get you too started, but but I do know that there there's a coach in Ontario who doesn't appreciate Smitty doing that. Uh, I think maybe in his honor, my son has started to spend the first five minutes of every practice lobbing pucks end to end. As uh, like you know, actually the, working on it or just oh, he's actually around. working on. It. No, he's totally working yeah. on it. He's working on learning the one knee down. He's working on. Uh, how far can he land it? Um, you know, yeah. he's still pretty young, so a little bit over center, but not too far. Oh, stop and, it. Uh, well, he's bigger and stronger Stop than it me. with the over center. If I ever put one uh, in the air over center, I'd walk off the ice. So would I. So would I. I'll never be able to do it. And uh, and, and just, you know, plug for a big game coming up this week. If anybody lives in Nanaimo, it's going to be Hutch versus Hutch Friday morning. Oh, yeah. The RCMP game. Yeah. If anybody so lives in Nanaimo and can make that game, please take a video camera to get video of the elder Hutch tending goal against his son. We will pay for said video to be published <laughs> later. Not, we won't totally even put fight. that. We won't even put that one on in goal premium. I've, I've, so I've got the, the Woody video. Site. Don't forget. I've got the, Oh Woody no, video. never mind. Never mind. You've got the, yeah. the, the falling down slash pad stack. Never, yeah. mind. Uh, never mind. Boys. Taking the shots on the empty net. Nice boys. Empty netters. Like we are, uh, we are just absolutely like devoid of memory that we didn't remember this. GWG, uh, the Greater Ontario Junior Hockey League. I think this was even this year or last year. Remember, 
the team in how about zero zero tie double OT GWG for the goaltender. That's right. I remember right? that one. Because that was- the, the other team pulled their goalie. They were up on they had a four on three power play, or they pulled their goalie to create a four on three because they needed the win for some type of playoff standards. Yeah, a yes. tie wasn't going to be good enough. And St. Thomas goaltender Anthony. Oh, I hope I'm going to say this right. Hurtubisi or H-U-R-T-U-B-I-S-E. There's no chance that's right. Yeah, Hurtubisi, Hurtubisi. I apologize, Anthony, for <laughs> screwing that one up. Uh, GWG, double OT, nothing, nothing. Game winner wins it one nothing. So t- the answer to the trivia question about the game winning goal, absolutely, it's been done. It's been done in the Greater Ontario Junior Hockey League by, we'll just call him Anthony. Hell of a shot. How about since he's the only one with the GWG and since you just butchered his last name, if Anthony, if you're listening, we'd love to have you on the pod for a quick little cameo to talk about your GWG yeah. and to teach Woody how to pronounce your name. And, uh, and the life of a backup goaltender is much better now that we brought the backup goalie towels back. And, and hey, listen, speaking of listening, boys, little anecdote coming off the Pecorini. I can't say who, but I, had, uh, I was approached by somebody in the press box recently um, who works for an NHL team in the in the goalie department? Who just said that uh, it passed on some nice words about the podcast and the things w- that we got going on, um, and said that they have all their young professional and prospect goalies make sure they listen to the podcast, especially when we've got any other NHL and pro goalies on, just because of some of the advice we hear from some of these guys. Uh, they think that there's there the the information's valuable enough that they want all their prospects and up and coming goaltenders to hear what the other guys have to say. So I thought that was a nice uh, that made That's me awesome. feel good to hear it. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, no, 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 not to uh to pat you guys on the back too much, but it's 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 um it's an insult to say that you guys are the industry leader. Like nobody even comes close to the product that you guys uh put out, whether it's Ingle Premium or these interviews with National Hockey League goaltenders. And Hutch, don't don't make that face. It's true. <laughs> But well, I'll, I'll it accept just, it. Nobody it is, has access to that to, it, 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 to the interviews that you guys get. That's it is. Awesome. It is true because nobody else does it. <laughs> right? Exactly. It's it's not even it's not even close that well, we're providing the. If you carve of a niche that's small enough, tenders. it's easy to lead. Yeah, it's a it's a party <laughs> party of one in this department in terms of people that are actually trying to do it. So we'll take that I status. We'll take the status as leaders when did, nobody else is. Did doing you mention it. to said? Uh, did you mention to said NHL goalie person that uh, it would be much more efficient for all their prospects to listen to these interviews on In Goal Premium, and he should get an organization wide <laughs> yes. subscription. The packet well, interview has been up now for I think three days. Well, uh, the, uh, we'll have to work on that, but uh, said goalie person's uh, NHL goalie coach is already one of our first subscribers. That's true. In goal premium. That's and of true. course, um, when they're that buying was the strangest subscribe- piece, that was Maybe- the strangest piece of all of this for me, to be honest. When we, when we first launched this, we get a little email every time somebody subscribes and, and you, you give it a quick little look. And literally the first person to subscribe to in goal premium was a professional goaltender. And then we start getting these NHL goalie coaches coming in and it's, uh, it's humbling. It's, it's, and yeah, a whole lot of fun, let's we, be honest. And we should probably start hitting them up and seeing if they're okay with us publishing their names. Um, we don't do it because they're just they're they're, they're it's private info. They're private. They're 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 buying our their subscribers privately, and so that's not our right to publish it. But we're we're like we got got to be getting close to half the league in terms of NHL goalie coaches subscribing. We have got a bunch of pros from overseas in here in North America subscribing. It's been it's been pretty cool. Uh, I love the two of you guys. Uh, Woody just soaking up uh, all the all the compliments like oh, yeah. uh, like a good goaltender. No rebounds out there, just just absorbing it. And and Hutch Hutch, uh, I was deflecting, deflecting them, them. like he's deflecting Patrick them, yeah. Waugh out there, like knocking them away, uh, been, batting them away. Boys, it's been a big week for me between the Henrik yeah. Sedin, you know, telling them my peers that I stopped him on a breakaway. And now, like this is this is like this is how I am with beer league. I'm like, hey, folks, like I'm the number I'm the number one goalie on my team. Never mind, there's no no yeah. backups, but I'm the number one. There's no point exactly. having it too when you're that's that good. That's why we love playing uh, playing beer league mentally. So because tell us the you truth. Don't have to was, deal with the backup. Tell us the truth, Woody. Was was did Henrik try the Kucher off on you, and you were just too slow to get out of the way? Uh, no, no, he went uh, he went backhand five hole, and to tell the truth, he had me he absolutely had me beat. He had me opened up like a can of tuna as I came across, and he was tucking it in five hole, and he just didn't. Maybe it was probably the bad ice. It was pretty broken down by that point, late in the second period. And uh, you guys know how it is. You're coming across in the butterfly, and you know your beat back the other way, and you yeah. you pull that back heel in as fast as you can to try and sort of catch that puck before it goes through. 
and I just got it with the back heel. I was beat. I remember I, like I I felt it hit my back of my heel. I know I'd managed to pull it in just in time, probably just above the goal line. And I looked up and the look on his face like, oh, that's like, yeah. I Thank felt God you're it, wearing the step steel extreme or you wouldn't have gotten it. Dude, oh. I, I kicked that back heel in so hard to try and stop that, that actually the the end of the blade uh, went through the uh, the sock on on the back of my foot. Like I, kicked, <laughs> I kicked it into the back calf so hard it went through my sock. You, uh, you wouldn't have needed all that if you would have uh, had that game stick that you busted a couple of weeks ago. Oh, uh, for sure I would have had Pecorini. it. Thanks to Pekka Rene. Thanks to and Cam over at uh, the Hockey Shop Source for Sports. And uh, congratulations again to uh, Daniel and Henrik. Uh, we haven't uh, spent that much time on uh, skaters during this podcast, but deservedly so. Uh, two great ambassadors of the sport of uh, Sweden and of uh, Vancouver. For Kevin and David. I'm Darren. Thanks for listening to In Goal Radio, the podcast presented by Source for Sports Surrey, the hockey shop, thehockeyshop.com. Hockey